Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now today's video as you can probably tell by the style that I'm shooting this in already is going to be a little bit different. I'm not shooting this video on a tripod like I normally would. Um, but that's because today we're going to be doing a tour of my shelf over here. This uh, shelf is where that I keep uh, a you know good amount of some vintage computers that I have, vintage game consoles, and uh, just a lot of cool you know older technology stuff and some newer stuff as well. And I thought I would do uh, a little shelf tour and you know share this with you guys, and uh, you guys can obviously let me know what you think of this collection down in the comments below if you would like. And this is the same shelf that was briefly featured in a new collaboration that I've been working on with a computer clan called Vintage Apple Vault. It's a brand new series that takes a look at vintage Apple computers in a new light and talks with collectors about their own personal experience using them. Some of you guys may have seen the live premiere of the pilot episode, but if you haven't, the full episode will be going up on YouTube on the 30th of this month, August 30th, and it will feature myself as a special guest. So I want to give a huge thank you to Ken and all of the people that worked on Vintage Apple Vault for making it possible. And I want to give a huge thank you to all of the new guys that are coming over from the Computer Clan after seeing uh, my segment in the pilot episode of Vintage Apple Vault. And that's partly why that I'm doing this video, to give you guys kind of a continuation of some of the things that you saw in that video. But uh, I've, I've done some videos like this before. I did uh, a video of my box vintage software, a video of my laptop collection, and most recently a video of my modern software collection. So this video is uh, going to be kind of shot in that same style. So, so this uh, shelving unit here contains five different shelves, and I'm just going to be you know, starting here at the very bottom, going all the way to the top and just kind of be talking about all the items individually. Um, for a lot of these I have done uh, individual separate videos on them so like for the first one we're going to start here with the Apple II GS I did a video on this uh, a couple years ago a full time travel video where I talked about the history of this computer and how that I got it but um, to briefly sum it up in a sort of TLDR version I got this computer for $35 at a garage sale um, I instantly had to have it because this is the special Wozniak edition um, the was limited edition Apple II GS meaning that this was one of the first 50,000 Apple II GS's it's not actually his real signature, they just took an image of his signature and kind of, you know, put it on uh, the front case, but it says Waz Unlimited Edition right there. Really, really nice. Um, this computer came with a 3.5 inch drive, as you can see right here, as well as a uh, newer 5.25 inch Apple drive. Uh, the ones that came with the Apple II, you know, they were much, uh, you know, they looked a lot different. They were, uh, like, black on the front. Um, so this one was specifically made, I believe, for the Apple II GS. Um, I also got some software with it as well. You can see that I do also have the uh, vintage old school Apple stickers, which are pretty awesome. Um, yes, they did give Apple stickers with their products back in the 80s as well, like they still do today. These ones are actually still sealed. You can see that that, uh, that, that tape there has never been broken. Um, so I'm just, you know, kind of keeping these in this package here because they are, you know, pretty cool. Um, I also do have a few floppy diskettes here as well. Some three and a half inch ones and a couple five and a quarter inch ones right here. Um, I've got this Apple Presents Apple Works diskette. I've got the Apple IIGS system disc, your tour of the Apple IIGS and the Apple II GS system tools. Um, something that's very interesting about this specific machine that I have here is it has never had a ROM upgrade, uh, which basically would upgrade the internal ROM of the computer. And back in the day, you know, back in the 80s when you had these machines, to get a, a, uh, a ROM upgrade, you had to take this machine into your Apple dealer. And uh, a ROM upgrade is needed in this case to actually run uh, the operating system. This is a uh, version 4.0 of GSOS, and when I uh, try to boot this disk on this computer, it will come up with an error saying that you need to have version 01 or greater of your internal ROM. So, meaning that this computer here still has the original factory ROM. Uh, I guess version 00. It's never been upgraded, so I don't know how many machines are actually left. You know that. Um, did not have a, a ROM upgrade, but I assume that the person who you know bought this back in the 80s uh, didn't use it very much. They never went to their Apple dealer to get uh, the ROM upgrade to use you know this newer software, or they just never used any of this you know newer software. But yeah, uh, that is you know pretty interesting that I can't even run um, version four of uh, GSOS on this machine. Um, I also have a couple five and a quarter inch diskettes. These ones I will be able to boot because this is just you know Apple II software. Um, go ahead and take one of these out here. 
uh, for you. This is DOS 3.3 System Master. This is uh, the System Master boot diskette for uh, Apple DOS 3.3 and uh, a basics disk as well. So these, uh, uh, as you can see, have you know kind of aged. Uh, you know the whole sticker on here is a little bit faded. I'm not sure if it actually intended to look that way. I think this was probably just like a regular white label, but. Um, yeah, I do have those as well. That's all, uh, you know, the owner that I bought this from. I don't know if he was the uh, original owner. He didn't say, but uh, he had all of this stuff with it. There's Apple's old address on the back there. Um, I also got some uh, manuals with this computer as well. Now, I didn't get these with, you know, from the same guy that I bought the, you know, computer and everything else previously that I showed. Um, I actually won these in an eBay auction, and these are all of the original manuals, as far as I know, that came with the Apple IIGS. So, go ahead and just take one of them out here. This is uh, the Apple IIGS Memory Expansion uh, Card Owner's Guide. Um, all of these uh, manuals, by the way, I should mention, are in extremely good shape. Let's go ahead and take this one out here. This is uh, a tour of AppleSoft Basic for the Apple IIc, IIe, or IIGS. Um, and... I always kind of take all these out. I mean, again, this is kind of hard as I'm doing this, you know, just with, uh, like, I'm doing one hand on the camera style filming. But, um, yeah, I got a bunch of these manuals here. They are in very, very nice shape. Um, the one back there is the, you know, the biggest one is the Apple IIGS owner's guide, as you can see right there. But what's also funny is pretty much all of these have the original registration card in here that hasn't been used. Um, it might be in the back on this one here. Yeah, so right here, this is the original, like, um, card you would send back to Apple. It says, you know, tell Apple about your, and it says Apple five and a quarter inch drive. So basically what you would do is you would answer all these questions here, fill out, you know, whatever number that you uh, chose here, and you would send this card back to Apple, and I don't know what you would get if you would get anything in return, but this is basically, uh, oh, and you, you actually had to pay for the, uh, for the postage as well. This was not a, like, prepaid thing but yeah all of these have never been used i guess the guy that owned these manuals didn't send them in or anything so uh you can see i, I also have the apple uh 2gs keyboard this is one of the first apple desktop bus you know one of the modular keyboards um so i have that one and uh, i do have the mouse as well but anyway yeah that's the apple 2gs um let's move on over here you guys probably I uh, saw this when I was talking about the uh, the disk drives there. This is a Apple QuickTake 100. This was back in uh, the 90s when Apple kind of wasn't doing so hot. Uh, they tried to get into a bunch of different uh, consumer technology markets. Um, and one of those was uh, consumer digital cameras. And they did this right here with the QuickTake 100. This is an Apple branded digital camera, although it was not manufactured by Apple. This is actually just a, a rebadged Kodak camera. I'm not sure of the exact uh, Kodak model number, but um, th these are basically manufactured by Kodak. They're almost identical, if not exactly identical to uh, the regular Kodak model, although it was just, you know, sold by Apple and they had a big, you know, e emphasis on you could just plug it into your Mac through the serial port right here and um, be able to take your own photos. Um, but yeah, this was, you know, one of the things uh, that they were trying to do uh, along with things like the Power CD and, well, of course, like the Apple Newton was their own thing, but they were kind of just trying to try a bunch of different, you know, markets uh, to, you know, get into um, because they weren't really doing so well at the time. But anyway, yeah, that's the Apple QuickTake 100. They did um, make a 150, which was in this design as well. And then they did a 200 and a 250. Um, which looked more like a, a more traditional uh, digital camera and that was actually made by Fujifilm So it was again not made by Apple themselves, but it was manufactured by Fujifilm. So yeah um, That is the Apple quick take 100. That is basically it for the bottom shelf right here um, Before we move to the top shelf though I want to briefly touch on these two newspapers that are on top of the 2GS monitor I do own two of these and if you've seen back to the future, I mean, I'm a big back to the future fan I really like the movies um, if you've seen Back to the Future 2, you will know exactly what uh, what this newspaper is. USA Today actually printed this. This is a real issue of USA Today. You can see that just for this day, they did change like their logo up there. But this is actual news. It was talking about uh, the election 2016. So that was kind of like the big you know talking points uh, back then in 2015. But they put like this insert over the real news with a bunch of stuff about, you know, a basically a bunch of references, you know, to the movie. So that's basically it for the bottom shelf right there. Let's go ahead and move up to the second shelf here. And you can see that this is kind of uh, where I keep 
a decent amount of my gaming stuff, of my vintage gaming uh, consoles. Um, I do have a NES right there. I never actually did a video on the NES, but uh, this one does work, although it does have a few problems with getting um, the game to sometimes read, sometimes it just won't read, but uh, it does work. Um, I got this at a thrift store. I do have two Game Boy Colors up there. Um, those I got, uh, I actually featured those in a recent episode of uh, Thrift Store and Garage Sale Finds, but they're basically, you know, this one right here is the teal Game Boy Color, and this one up here is uh, the Pikachu silver one, you know, it has Pikachu on the side there, which is um, pretty cool, but yeah, NES, uh, I got the Super Nintendo over here, which I did a couple of videos on with Super Mario Kart in it. Um, I got a copy of Super Mario Brothers 2. Um, also have, uh, this was, uh, I think this was actually in the same episode as these two Game Boys, um, of their store and garage sale finds, but, um, this was, uh, that Japanese Nintendo DS game that I got at a garage sale that is still sealed, that I just kind of have, because, you know, it's, you know, from Japan, it wasn't sold here in the States, so I thought it was pretty cool. Also have some Game Boy games back there, we got a copy of, uh, so the first one there is Tetris, the one below that is F1 Race. Then we have uh, Pokemon Gold and Pokemon Yellow at the very bottom, along with some instruction manuals um, for the Game Boy as well. But yeah, so that is uh, Tetris right there. Pretty cool. One of my favorite games, you know, uh, Tetris for the Game Boy. Go ahead and set that back here. Yeah, that's basically it for the second shelf there. Um, let's move up to the third one now. So this one here is, uh, I just kind of call it like my Apple device collection. Um, you can see that I just kind of have a bunch of iPhones, a bunch of iPods up here that I keep, um, as well as a bunch of boxes as well. We also have a, a Lego Seattle Space Needle that I just built years ago, and uh, I thought it would be cool to kind of go there in the center. Um, but yeah, so just going from left to right here, I guess I can briefly touch on what each of these devices are. Uh, so this one over here is actually very interesting. This is an iPod uh, 30 gig. But what's unique about it is what's on the back here, and that is the HP logo you can see there. Um, this was actually an iPod that was sold by HP. Um, basically, a brief story about how this came to be was Apple was trying to get the iPod into some certain realtors, and HP had, you know, uh, a wider access to some retail channels. Apple did not. So they basically partnered with HP. Uh, to sell their iPods and as you know part of the deal was that the HP logo would go on the back there um, oh, Sorry, this is a 40 gig iPod not a 30 gig um, But uh, kind of like a funny story you can actually not take these into the Apple store because they were sold by HP You had to take them to HP if there were any you know issues with it You cannot take this into an Apple store. They would not service this so that was pretty funny um, This one does not work uh, unfortunately, I bought this on eBay uh, a few years ago, many years ago, actually. Had to have that. That sits right there. Um, next to that, I'll just kind of, you know, briefly touch on these as well. This is an iPod, or an iPod, an iPhone uh, first gen, or, you know, the uh, unofficially called the 2G. So this is the iPhone 2G. Got an iPhone 3GS right here, an iPhone 4 in white, uh, two iPhone 4Ss iPhone 5C, this is my iPod Touch 4th generation, this is another iPod 30 gig right here, this is in black, uh, an iPod Nano 3rd um, generation, iPod Shuffle 2nd gen, iPod Shuffle 4th gen, and an iPod Nano 4th gen without the camera on the back there, so um, yeah, that is uh, you know my little Apple device collection. So yeah, that is this shelf right here. Um, regarding videos on this shelf, I have done a couple videos on the original iPhone right here. Um, I featured the 3GS in a, uh, one episode of Thrift Store and Garage Sale Finds, along with a, a lot of these iPod decks. I mean, these three here came from uh, my local thrift stores, that iPhone 5C. Uh, there's a funny story behind that. I actually bought that on eBay. The guy um, was selling it as, you know, parts are not working, and the thing actually worked perfectly. Uh, it was just, like, it had to be, uh, restored through iTunes, but that's all it needed, and now it works 100%, so the guy basically sold me a fully working iPhone, I guess he thought it was broken for, like, $15. Actually, it was, like, 15 or, or like, 20 bucks for both the, this white iPhone 4 here and that iPhone 5C, so that was pretty much a steal. Um, so yeah, along with all of those boxes that I mentioned in the back. Um, moving up to the second to last shelf, this right here mainly just contains two items. Uh, you can see it contains my Macintosh SE and my Power Mac G4 Cube over there. 
Um, I have done videos on both of these computers. Uh, the most recent one was the Macintosh SC Overview. Uh, I did that video actually a few weeks ago, maybe about a month ago. Uh, you know, three to four weeks ago. So this video, I just did a little overview on it. And the i, uh, not the iMac G4, the Power Mac G4 Cube, which is, by the way, one of my favorite Apple computers. Um, I did a full episode of my time travel series on it where I actually went back and went over the history of this computer and uh, just a lot of general information about it. Uh, so I will have, like I said, links to pretty much all of the uh, videos that I have on these products down below in the video description if you guys are interested. And now let's go ahead and move up to the very, very top shelf. And up here is another kind of like an a, a extension of my game shelf. It's kind of like a whole other shelf with a bunch of uh, home video game consoles. Um, on the very top there I have a uh, original Game Boy with a, uh, a bright beam add-on which basically um, magnifies the screen and also gives it a, a little light which is pretty cool. I also have uh, a launch edition Nintendo GameCube in the purple right there. Um, on the very top of that second stack I've got a original Nintendo DS. Below that I have the uh, slim PlayStation 1 or just called the PS1. Under that I have a uh, full-size original PlayStation 1. And to the right we have a Sega Dreamcast. Now all of these consoles do work. I have tested them. And I just want to talk very briefly about the uh, Nintendo DS. So I'm just go ahead and bring that down here. So for those of you who own a original Nintendo DS, you might know that the battery on these things is insanely good. I mean, to give you a little bit of an idea, I got this Nintendo DS, I don't think I ever did a video on this, but I got this at one of my local thrift stores for I think four or five bucks many years ago, and when I brought it home, and even still today, uh, I now keep in mind I've never charged this thing, I've never, um, like, and I, I don't know where it was beforehand, the thing could have been left in a closet, or it could have been very actively used, but we go ahead and open this up here, I'll show you that, we go ahead and power this on. It still turns on. That uh, little green light comes on. It plays the startup sound. And if you look at the battery here, uh, you, may, you might be able to see that it is fully charged. These things just, they last for such a long time. It's really, really amazing. Um, but yeah, that is the uh, original Nintendo DS. And unfortunately, this DS does have one of the common problems that a lot of the original Nintendo DS has had. And that was that the hinge, as you can see, would snap right there. I think it was... Uh, just along this top I mean, there were multiple places that, that it could crack but this one decided to crack right there so um, you can still bring the whole screen back and it still will lock into place but it will very easily kind of almost want to come off on the right side there so but yeah that is the uh, original N Nintendo DS just wanted to briefly point that out because I thought it was pretty cool that uh, that the battery still lasts after all this time and uh, there you have it. That is basically a brief tour of my technology shelf that I have here. Um, I just want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, definitely be sure to uh, give it a thumbs up. Be sure to get subscribed if you haven't already to see more videos like this in the near future. And as always, guys, I will see you in the next video.